let's see how we can compare two data tables in UiPath. So I got an Excel sheet here with 10 uh, random, randomly generated names and on C2 we got 10 names as well. And we want to find out uh, which one of the names from sheet 1 that exist in sheet 2 and which one that doesn't. So let's say that we want to check Irish Washington. We can see that ex it exists over here, so that's a match. And if it uh, hadn't exist in sheet 2, there was no match. So what we'll do is we'll close this, this Excel sheet down and then we will um, import uh, the sheets as data tables here in UiPath. What uh, we're going to use is the activity read range here. We could um, either use the Excel read range or the workbook read, read range. I found out that the Excel here in UiPath had some bugs, so I always use uh, workbook. doesn't really matter. Um, the workbook path, well, I'll just find a folder here and shift right click and then we could uh, copy as path. So the workbook path is here. Then uh, we'll choose the sheet one and we'll choose like the entire sheet right here. And we need to output it to a data table. And uh, for that, we will use um, control K and uh, declare it as a data table and create it. We could call it DT sheet one like this. And then we should remember that uh, our Excel sheet, let me open it again, didn't have any headers. That's sometimes a mistake you can make. So we need to uh, unmark because there's no headers up here. That could be if we had a header saying names, but we don't. So we'll check this add header off so that our data won't be off. Then um, we'll create another read range. We could just copy this since they are almost similar, but instead of sheet one, it's sheet two. And uh, we'll create another data table for this range. We could call that DTC2 to stay in the same terminology like this. And we got our two uh, data tables down here. Now we're ready to go. What we'll do is that we will, um, first off, we will, I think I'm going to open the Excel sheet again so I can show you. Um, what we'll do is we'll make it for each uh, loop um, for sheet one. So we'll search for for each row here. We'll drag that in. And then um, we want to um, say for each row in this data table or this the Excel sheet, but uh, in the similar data sheet, we want to say for each row Abbott Crosby, we want to check if this Abbott Crosby exists in sheet two. So we will make it for each row in data sh DT sheet one. So I'll just write that like this. And then we'll um, want to do something in here. Just uh, delete this. And then we will make a, um, so for each uh, name here, we want to uh, have it for each uh, here. So we want to check if this name uh, matches these ones. So we'll go through them one by one. And um, so we'll drag in another um, for each, and then we will. Uh, well, we should call them two different things, so we can um, name them differently. We could call them for each line in DT sheet two, like this. What this does is that, uh, yeah, what I told you, but let me repeat it. We will go through these ones in sheet one, like one at a time, and from like Abbott Crosby. We will go uh, through each names in sheet two to find out if anything matches, if that makes sense. Then we will um, create an if here. So for each line here, we, we will see if uh, the name matches. So we'll find an if here. And what we will do is that we will um, compare the name in data sheet one here, that's the outer loop with their name in data sheet two. Uh, that's the inner loop. So um, we could uh, call them from, we could say row dot item. And then um, since we, there's no headers we can, um, in, in a, we can identify them with, we will just say that this is, uh, uh, remember that, uh, that the data tables are zero index. So this one is column uh, zero. So we will say that we want row and we want a zero of item. 
we want that to a string. But that we will find the name in um, in the outer loop, like the sheet one. And whenever this outer this name is equal to the line, remember that we um, had uh, the line here. Whenever uh, this one is equal to the line item in column zero to string, then we uh, we have a match. We could. Um, we could write line, we could make a right line here. Like this. And we could say that um, match. And then we could write out the name, which we'll find here. Hold on. Here. So right now, we are finding all the matches. Uh, we can see if that works. We'll uh, run the file. Oh, now we need to close the Excel. I forgot that, but we'll um, come up with an error. Yep. So let us close the Excel sheet. That's why I closed it in the first time. Let's try again. <clears throat> and when we go to output, we can see that um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven matches. So, um, and we got, since we got tr uh, 10 names, there's a tree that doesn't match from sheet one to sheet uh, two. Um, however, we want, if we want to um, write out the no matches, well, it was easy to say that we could just uh, make a right line here in else, but the thing is that we got a lot of uh, no matches because if we do it this way, because every time, let me show you again, Let's say that we have Abbott Crosby in the outer loop, and then we went uh, to the inner loop. Then this will be a no match. Then this will be a no match. No match. No match. No match. No match. No match. And a match and no match. So we'll have a lot of no matches, and that's uh, not what we're needing. So um, what we will do is that we will in the um, we will create a um, in the outer loop. We will create a um, variable. And we will uh, create a boolean value, so we'll uh, assign here. And we will place it in the beginning of the outer loop here. And we could call uh, this one control K, we'll declare new variable bool, could call it match. And uh, let us say that the value here uh, is false, so there's no match. And um, it's quite easy to go down here. And we could declare that whenever we have a match, then we'll end up here. Then we should change this uh, bool match here, the variable uh, bool match here. We'll change this one here, the variable type to bool match, remember that. We will change that to true. So now we know that if we come out in the... So whenever we, we go for a, a row here, and um, if we went through all the lines in uh, data sheet two, if the bool match is false at the end, then there was no match, and if it was true, there was a match. So um, that's uh, quite convenient because then we will, um, in the end of the outer loop, let me just find it. Uh, there's a lot of sequences here, but the end of the outer loop, um, that's here, this sequence here, we will go down to the end. So we'll drag in an if here. That's right over here. And we could say that if um, the bool match is false, then we got a no match, and we know that for sure. And um, we could write something like a uh, right line here. We could write something like no match. And then again, the uh, row item, the name of the row. So this one should do. Let's see if uh, that works. Now we should write both the matches and the no matches. <clears throat> oh, the Excel sheet again. Well, you'll see a lot of do's and don'ts in this video, but uh, remember to close the Excel sheet. <clears throat> Robot is running, and we got the output here. So we'll see that we have some matches, but then we'll have uh, three no matches here, and uh, some matches again. So Nana Simmons, Kason Walker, and Mehmet Osborne doesn't match in the three sheets. That sounds reasonable. Um, 
let's say that we want to uh, use uh, these um, this data. Uh, we want to build another data table. Well, we could um, we could make it. Oh, sorry. We could uh, make it uh, a bit more elegant. We could uh, build a data table up here. Build data table up here. And what we want in the data table is that we want uh, two columns. We could um, let's, uh, we could call this, that's the name. And then we want, if it's a match or a no match, so we'll call the second column um, status. Like this and we got no uh, data in the data table yet and we could call this uh, control K we could make a new data table here DT status could we call that so now we created the data table with the DT status and what we'll do is that every time we got a match we will write something to that data table and every time we got a no match we will write uh, something to that data table so instead of uh, this right line, we will um, uh, add a data row here. Drag this in. And what we will um, write in this data row is that uh, first off, we got uh, we got to um, add the data row to the DT stages here. And then we will write an array. So curly brackets. And then we will write something like first, we'll write the name. That was the uh, row item zero. I think that was in our copy paste, but let me write it here. And then we'll write comma. It's a little bit, bit difficult to see up here, but I hope you'll follow. And then we will write, because here, this is the match place, so we could write something like match in the status. That's it. We'll uh, delete this right line. Then um, here, we will um, at the data row as well because that's a no match place and again we'll add it to dt status here and we will write an array again we will write uh, the row dot item zero and to string here and then comma and then a no match like this and we will delete this one and let me save this one. Have I closed the Excel now? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, this should do it. And then we could um, write uh, the um, uh, this data table in our Excel sheet. So we'll uh, choose the right range, the workbook. We'll, we don't use the Excel again. We'll use it here in the end. And what we could do is that our workbook path, well, it's here, so shift right click again, copy as path, put it in here, and we will uh, write uh, our status sheet at sheet three, and the data table will be DT status, like this, and then we are ready to uh, compare the two data tables and write the result in the third sheet. So let's run. <coughs> Robot is running, and now uh, it should have been written to um, sheet three. Let's check. So sheet one is still the names, sheet one is still the names, and then uh, sheet two here. We'll see that all the names uh, is going down here and we got three no matches. So that's how you can pair data tables in UiPath. There's uh, some other ways. Uh, for example, we got a, a link version like in C-Sharp, but I'll uh, show that in a later video. If you've got any questions, leave them below or wishes for future videos. That's all for today. Bye-bye.